Okay, um, a good afternoon or good morning uh, to everyone for day three of the Pan-African Experience Sharing on Transformative Pedagogy for Peace, Resilience Building and Preventing Violent ex Extremism Through Education and Youth Empowerment in Africa. Similar to the uh, other three, uh, if you're just joining us for day three or you've joined us uh, for day one and day two, similar to day one and day two, we will just go through a few technical details regarding the <clears throat> Zoom webinar, but also the the various tools that we may be using throughout the all three days, uh, but a very warm welcome to everyone. Um, for this particular uh, session, we will be using only Mentimeter. So Ment uh, Mentimeter is quite straightforward. I will be sharing my screen just like I am doing right, right now. Uh, we will then ask uh, all of you uh, or as many of you as possible to go to www.menti.com and enter the following code that will be shared on your screen. And once you have or once you have input the, the code and you will have access to the Mentimeter presentation, you will then have the possibility to answer a question or in this particular case, several questions that will be presented to you. And this is your chance to uh, be as interactive and contribute as much as possible to the webinar. So we highly encourage everyone to do so. Um, if that is uh, a bit too complicated from a technical uh, technological point of view, that is not an issue. We also, uh, just like what people are currently doing right now with the chat, uh, kindly use the chat uh, to also answer the questions that you may see on your screen. Um, in terms of simple technical aspects regarding the Zoom webinar, uh, for optimal viewing of the webinar, we highly encourage ev uh, everyone to mute yourselves and refrain from activating your camera if you are not speaking. And finally, if you have any questions for the panelists whatsoever, please do not hesitate to use the chat functionality uh, that you will see on the bottom of your Zoom, uh, Zoom screen. If you require interpretation, interpretation will be available all throughout the webinar in Arabic and French. Uh, to access this uh, interpretation, click on the globe that you see on the bottom of your Zoom panel, and then click on the language that you, uh, that you require. Uh, whether that is French, Arabic, or, or the original um, English that you are listening to right now. You have also the option to mute the original audio. This will be make it easier for you to hear the interpreter uh, and just the interpreter instead of just the speaker. But that is up to you and your personal preference. Finally, we aim to ensure that uh, all throughout all webinars, this is a safe and inclusive space for not only children, but all uh, participants of the webinar. Uh, to that end, if there are any participants or speakers who are under 18 years of age, we kindly uh, ask you to rename yourselves only to your first name, uh, and that is all. And if there are any qu uh, questions or concerns regarding the webinar, regarding any other technical aspects, or simply just uh, uh, concerns or questions, please do not hesitate to, to reach out to me via chat, uh, and I'll be happy to answer any other questions. Uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, you, all, you all enjoyed this uh, last day of the webinar. Uh, and I hand it over to you, Sal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Davier. Thank you for those technical clarifications. Uh, they are well understood, I hope. Uh, bonjour, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is Saliu Sal. I'm the Senior Program Coordinator of UNESCO IGBA. Welcome again to the third webinar session on transformative pedagogy for peace, Resilience Building and Prevention of Violent Extremism Through Education and Youth Empowerment in Africa. Day one and day two were really very exciting with insightful addresses and interactive conversations and discussions. I hope day three will be at the same level at least. Today's session will focus on experience sharing between experts and policy makers. Uh, and the agenda will follow this outline First of all, we'll have an opening and welcoming session, followed by a panel discussion with some experts in the area of peace building and policy make and some policy makers from countries. We'll then have an open plenary plenary discussion before going to the closing closing session. For the purpose of the uh, opening ceremony and opening session. Uh, we'll be having a speech from the direct, from Mr. Alin Badrejob. Let me switch into French. So, Mr. Alin Badrejob, the director de l'Institut National d'Etudes et d'Action pour le Développement de l'Education du Ministère de l'Education National. Avant de lui donner la parole, 
Je voudrais au nom de la directrice de l'UNESCO, Iqba, Dr Yumiko Yokozeki, qui se joindra à nous vers la fin pour la cérémonie de clôture, vous souhaiter à toutes et à tous la bienvenue dans, cette, dans cet atelier, dans ce webinaire, et vous remercier pour votre, acti, pour votre participation active et votre engagement, aussi bien dans les discussions que dans les actions sur le, sur le terrain. Vraiment, recevez, recevez ces vifs remerciements et sa reconnaissance. Et je voudrais en son nom aussi renouveler l'engagement de Igba à continuer à accompagner les pays dans la mise en œuvre pas, de ces projets et des leçons qui ont été apprises lors de, 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 de l'implantation de, de ces projets sur la construction de la terre. Donc, sans plus tarder, je m'en vais remettre la parole à M. Aline Badredjob, directeur de l'INEA du ministère de l'Éducation du Sénégal, pour euh, un message d'ouverture. Est-ce que vous êtes avec nous? Oui, salut. Aline Badara, je vous voilà. passe la parole. Alors. Merci. Voilà, merci. Allez-y. Voilà. Bien, directeur, Mesdames, Messieurs, les représentants, des équipes pays, membres du projet. Vous m'entendez, salut? Oui, on vous entend et on vous voit parfaitement. Voilà, très bien. Chers panélistes, voilà des pays participants, Sénégal, Algérie, Éthiopie, mesdames, messieurs, les organisateurs de la réunion, chers participants, chers participantes, mesdames, messieurs. Cette allocution au nom de M. le ministre de l'Éducation nationale du Sénégal, M. Momodou Tala, à l'occasion de ces réunions panafricaines de partage d'expériences en ligne. Je voudrais, au nom du Sénégal, pays membre de ce programme, remercier Dr. Yumiko Yokozeki, directeur de l'UNESCO ICBA, et son équipe pour la mise en œuvre de cette activité fort importante. Aujourd'hui, le Sénégal accorde un grand intérêt à l'approche transformationnelle pour la paix, le renforcement de la résilience et la prévention de l'extrémisme violent par l'éducation et l'autonomisation des jeunes en Afrique. Je voudrais à cet effet remercier tous les pays ici réunis qui confirment leur intérêt pour ce programme ambitieux qui permet de soutenir et de motiver les jeunes à s'engager dans la transformation des problèmes dans leur communauté, leur établissement d'enseignement supérieur et leur doter des compétences nécessaires pour devenir des agents de paix et travailler à défier et à transformer la violence dans leur communauté. Au regard de l'intérêt que notre pays accorde au développement du capital humain, dans son référentiel en matière de politique économique, le plan Sénégal émergent. Ce programme est en parfaite cohérence avec les choix de nos autorités. En organisant, nous donne l'opportunité Ah, Zambien, Zambien. A lot of people are there. You meet others who give you the best Zambien. Excusez-moi, mon micro est désactivé. En organisant cette réunion en ligne, l'ICBA nous donne l'opportunité d'interagir avec nos pays frères, de mutualiser nos expériences et d'envisager des perspectives de prise en charge soutenables des défis. En effet, il y aura un double effet. D'une part, faire disposer d'informations propres sur le thème, de l'autre, renforcer les capacités de l'expertise nationale, ce qui aura un effet sur la poursuite des activités engagées. J'encourage vivement Igba à consolider la dynamique pour consolider les réussites en cours. En souhaitant des travaux fructueux, je réaffirme au nom de M. le ministre de l'Éducation nationale tout l'intérêt que notre pays accorde à ce programme. Je vous remercie de votre aimable attention.
Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, directeur Aline Badara, pour cette, pour cette déclaration, pour cette adresse euh, et pour avoir encore souligné l'intérêt que le Sénégal accorde à ce, à ce projet euh, sur euh, la construction de la paix et la prévention de l'extrême violent. Et il est fort heureux que ce projet euh, s'inscrive aussi dans, en droite ligne des programmes du, du, du Sénégal. Et merci pour, pour l'accompagnement que, que vous nous avez accordé depuis le début de ce, de ce projet. Merci infiniment. Maintenant, on va, euh, je vais demander à tout un chacun d'allumer la vidéo pour qu'on puisse prendre le, la photo de groupe. Est-ce qu'on peut prendre la photo de groupe, s'il vous plaît? Eleonora, tu peux guider dans ce sens? Oui, donc c'est bien que tout le monde allume les caméras. You can all turn on your camera. And then Xavier and I are going to take some screenshots. We have three pages, so bear with us. Okay, we are starting. So first page. Please turn on your camera, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to you, Sal. We have taken the family photo. Très bien. Merci beaucoup. Merci, euh, Xavier. Merci, Eleonora. Merci, tout le monde. Euh, donc, on va engager la deuxième partie de notre, de notre session d'aujourd'hui. Euh, elle consiste en une plénière. Et cette plénière, c'est pa un panel, en fait. Ce n'est pas une plénière, c'est un panel euh, dans lequel sont invités, comme je le disais au début, des experts en formation, des, des formateurs en construction de la paix, mais aussi des décideurs politiques au niveau national de certains pays. Euh, le thème principal de ce, de ce panel, la question principale, c'est comment vous avez intégré la pédagogie transformationnelle dans vos contextes spécifiques, dans vos contextes respectifs. Et pour en parler, nous aurons le professeur Boubacar Nian, qui est un formateur en, 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 en conscience de la paix. Nous aurons Dr. Patrick Tom de l'Afrique du Sud. Nous aurons Madame Nora Taïri de l'Algérie et Dr. Abate Getahoun de l'Éthiopie. Donc, pour commencer, je vais remettre la parole à professeur Boubacar Nian, qui va nous parler des perspectives en matière de prévention de l'exclusion, de la construction de la paix et de la résilience et de l'autonomisation. Des, des apprenants. Professeur Nian, si vous êtes avec nous, je vous donne la parole. Bonjour, salut, bonjour tout le monde. Je peux y aller? Allez-y, on vous entend parfaitement. Bon, je vais... Voilà, elle a mis la... Donc, je voudrais partager avec euh, l'ensemble des collègues mon expérience dans le processus d'implémentation du programme PEV, Prévention de l'extrême violence par l'éducation, l'approche transformationnelle, dans les pays d'Afrique subsaharienne. Cette expérience, bon, il faudrait peut-être avant de parler de l'expérience, parler du contexte des pays et des niveaux d'enseignement qui ont été ciblés par le programme auquel j'ai participé. Vous n'êtes pas sans savoir que l'Afrique subsaharienne, en particulier les pays du Sahel, sont confrontés à beaucoup de contraintes, pour ne pas parler de fragilité, d'instabilité, qu'elles soient sociopolitiques, il y a des soubresauts, des, des, des violences liées à des conflits politiques, sociopolitiques, mais aussi il y a des instabilités socioculturelles qui font que certaines catégories sont stigmatisées. Il y a une violence symbolique, culturelle, d'exclusion quelquefois de certaines catégories mais aussi il y a des instabilités, des contraintes socio-économiques 
qui font que beaucoup de jeunes perdent un peu espoir et peuvent être happés par des groupes qui se réclament ou qui prônent l'extrémisme violent. Et ce qui fait que dans cette région-là, plusieurs, des milliers, pour ne pas dire pas des plusieurs milliers d'écoles, Bon, je ne veux pas prendre un pays, mais je sais que dans un des pays dont je vais parler, l'année dernière, il y avait plus de 2000 établissements scolaires qui étaient fermés. Vous voyez donc le nombre d'enfants qui, qui n'avaient plus accès à l'école, avec les conséquences qu'on peut deviner. Donc, c'est ce contexte-là, dans ce contexte-là, on a essayé de dérouler ce programme de prévention de l'extrême violent par l'approche transformationnelle. Les, les pays, le directeur de l'UNEAT a dit que le Sénégal faisait partie de ce pays, de ce groupe, le Burkina Faso, le Niger, le Mali, mais aussi l'Afrique centrale, les pays de l'Afrique centrale, j'y reviendrai, euh, en parlant justement des, des niveaux ciblés. Il y avait les écoles primaires, les écoles, les écoles du moyen secondaire et l'université. Pour le Sénégal, il y a eu et l'université, donc les enseignants de, de l'université, et pour les pays de l'Afrique centrale, les, les enseignants et les décideurs du supérieur. Le Sénégal aussi a bénéficié de, de, du, du programme au niveau du primaire et du moyen secondaire le Burkina Faso, le Niger et le Mali, c'est aussi primaire et moyen secondaire. Quels sont les acteurs qui ont été mobilisés? Il y a eu donc des formateurs de formateurs, bon, des inspecteurs, des conseillers pédagogiques, des chefs d'établissement, mais le gros lot, la plus grande partie de ces acteurs mobilisés, étaient constitués d'instituteurs, c'est-à-dire ceux qui enseignaient à l'école primaire et des professeurs du moyen secondaire. Bien sûr, chaque pays a choisi de mettre le focus, ou bien si on prend l'exemple du Mali, ils ont décidé de mettre le focus sur les acteurs du moyen secondaire, donc les professeurs du moyen secondaire. Pour le Burkina Faso, c'est le primaire, euh, même le comment on appelle la petite enfance, le primaire et le moyen secondaire. Le Niger, c'est pareil, primaire, moyen secondaire, et le Sénégal, primaire. Les, les régions d'expérimentation aussi, où on a essayé de développer le programme, c'est des circonscriptions, c'était laissé à l'appréciation des pays qui ont choisi les régions d'expérimentation des régions, des circonscriptions scolaires où on connaissait, où il y avait une forte prévalence de, de conflits ou en tout cas de situations qui ne permettaient pas une, un déroulement optimum des, des établissements. Et bon, donc, même si pour des raisons de sécurité, euh, les formations ne se faisaient pas dans ces zones, mais c'est des enseignants de ces zones qui étaient davantage ciblés. Les niveaux d'information ou d'expérimentation, comme j'ai dit, c'était le primaire, le secondaire. Pour le supérieur, c'était plutôt une information, sensibilisation de ces acteurs-là. Voilà donc le contexte. On passe, diapo 2, s'il vous plaît. Les, les, les acquis, quels sont les acquis de ces de cette expérimentation. Bien sûr, avant de démarrer une expérimentation, quelle qu'elle soit, notamment en matière d'enseignement de, ou d'éducation, de formation, il faut avoir des outils. Et ce, que, ce qui a été fait, un guide a été contextualisé pour le, les pays de, du Sahel, mais indépendamment de ce guide de, de, ce guide de référence pour tout le monde, chaque pays, suivant ses contextes, son contexte, a contextualisé 
ce guide pour avoir un guide de formation pour les enseignants, un guide pour les formateurs de formation pour à, à, animer des sessions de facilitation. Mais aussi, ces guides ont été élaborés à partir de socles de compétences. Chaque pays, compte tenu de ses réalités, de ses a dit, voilà, pour cette expérimentation, voilà les compétences qu'on voudrait installer chez les enfants, chez les apprenants. Ça peut être la justice, ça peut être la solidarité. Et chaque pays a choisi des valeurs cardinales, quatre valeurs ou cinq, autour desquelles on va bâtir tout un, des, des, des enseignements, apprentissages, des, des connaissances, des savoir-faire, des savoir-être pour pouvoir endiguer cette l'extrémisme violent. En dehors de ces socles de compétences, bien sûr, il y a eu des fiches de facilitation de sessions de formation. Bon, comment faciliter une formation toujours avec l'approche transformationnelle. Des fiches de facilitation aussi euh, de séquences pédagogiques, comment les enseignants peuvent, dans leur classe, euh, en s'inspirant de la démarche de la pédagogie transformationnelle animée des sessions d'enseignement-apprentissage. Il y a eu des instruments d'évaluation, parce que tout ça, il faut évaluer les, les, comment, les enseignements apprentissage reçus par les élèves. Et là, il y a eu une innovation où on a demandé aux, aux élèves d'évaluer pas de dire le maître est beau, mauvais ou non, ce n'était pas le sens de cette évaluation, mais ce qu'ils ont aimé dans la séquence pédagogique, ce qu'ils ont moins aimé, ce qu'ils ont appris de nouveau, et ainsi de suite. Donc, c'est pour les placer dans cette échelle de participation de la pédagogie, qu'ils ne soient pas des acteurs qui reçoivent tout dans le processus d'apprentissage et qu'ils participent, mais aussi des fiches d'auto-évaluation des enseignants qui eux-mêmes vont voir ce qu'ils qu ont moins bien apprécié, ce qu'ils ont moins apprécié dans leur enseignement, enseignement apprentissage, ce qui a bien marché et ainsi de suite. Mais des fiches d'évaluation aussi au niveau des établissements. Et un projet de charte d'établissement. Je vais un peu insister sur ce, cette charte d'établissement parce qu'elle permet, ce n'est pas un règlement intérieur, elle n'est pas contraignante, mais c'est un engagement des parties prenantes de l'école au sein de l'école pour dire voilà comment notre école, nous voudrions que notre école marche avec des valeurs. Chaque, chacun doit faire euh, pour participer à une vie euh, où l'extrémisme le, violent, où la violence tout court euh, est, est exclue. Quels sont les effets qu'on a eus? Je disais donc que. On va, parce que l'expérimentation, j'y reviendrai tout à l'heure, l'expérimentation n'a pas été jusqu'au bout dans certains pays, mais on a quand même constaté des effets chez les enseignants. J'explique. Avant la formation des enseignants, avant les sessions, de, les ateliers de formation, on, leur admi on administre un, un pré-test. C'est un test de positionnement sur les valeurs sur la pédagogie transformationnelle, sur, l euh, sur les démarches pédagogiques. C'est une batterie de questions bon, suivant les niveaux, euh, entre une vingtaine de questions environ, entre 15 et 20 questions, qui sont administrées aussi bien aux formateurs, aux professeurs qu'aux instituteurs, pour voir leur perception, leur approche, leur conception de avant de recevoir la formation. Et après la formation, après les sessions de formation, on administre le même test aux mêmes participants pour voir s'ils ont évolué dans leur perception, par exemple, de l'extrémisme violent, leur compréhension de l'extrémisme violent, leur approche pédagogique, par exemple, sur les grands principes de l'approche transformationnelle. Et le tableau que vous voyez là, j'ai pris un exemple d'un pays. Hein. Il y a eu, nous avons eu plus de 330 enseignants et inspecteurs qui ont participé à ces sessions de formation. Hein. Plus de 330. 
donc euh, 350, même un peu plus. Et là, je vous donne un exemple. Mais cet exemple, il n'est pas, je vous l'ai donné, mais j'aurais pu vous donner d'autres exemples de, de pays hein, où on a eu à peu près les mêmes, les mêmes résultats. Le tableau montre que ceux qui ont eu plus de 100%, il y a eu 10,7% hein, du groupe de ce pays-là qui ont progressé de plus de 100%. C'est-à-dire que euh, ils ont amélioré leur score ou ils ont évolué dans leur perception de l'extrémisme violent, de la pédagogie de transformation de plus de 100%. Il y en a qui ont fait 200%, 150%, mais là, on a essayé de faire, de, de les présenter en plus de 100%. Et là, on a 10,7% du groupe. Ceux qui ont progressé entre 99%, 99 et 50%, qui ont amélioré donc leur score premier de T1 à T2, on en a 25,7%. Ceux qui ont progressé entre 49% et 20%, 31,8%. Ceux qui ont changé, amélioré leur, ou évolué dans leur perception, leur posture, entre 19% et 10%, 12, 21,2%, entre 9 et 0% qui n'ont pas bougé, 7, 8. Et ceux qui ont régressé, c'est-à-dire qui ont vu leur score baisser, on n'en a eu que 2,8. Vous voyez, à la lecture de ce tableau, on peut dire qu'il y a un potentiel qui existe chez les enseignants qui ont été encadrés et euh, qui peuvent perpétuer donc euh, parce que maintenant ils ont acquis des postures, des comportements euh, idoines pour pouvoir euh, développer la pédagogie transformationnelle dans, le, dans les écoles, mais aussi cette approche qui veut mobiliser les enfants, qui de, doivent devenir des, des acteurs dans leur propre, euh, des acteurs actifs dans leur propre formation. Et vous voyez donc ce qu'on peut imaginer déjà des formations en cascade que ces enseignants, ces 350 ou 400 enseignants, euh, peuvent développer dans le dans leur pays. Hein? Professeur, oui. Excusez de vous interrompre. Vous, vous pouvez résumer en, dans les deux minutes qui suivent, s'il vous plaît. Voilà. Oui, oui, non, non, j'ai pratiquement fini. C'était voilà, ça. Là. Bon, ça. On passe au, à la fin. Les perspectives, il y en a trois, parce que dans certains pays, le, le programme n'a pas été développé jusqu'au bout. Au Niger, il y a eu des expérimentations. Au Mali, on n'a pas pu, parce pour des raisons sociopolitiques. Mais les perspectives, il y a des opportunités. Euh, ce la première opportunité, c'est que l'approche transformationnelle a de fortes similitudes avec des pédagogies actives, comme l'APC, qui... Euh, en vigueur dans pratiquement tous les pays. Donc, il ne devrait pas y avoir de problème pour qu'on puisse, euh, disons, introduire l'approche euh, transformationnelle. Mais il y a un défi aussi, c'est comment poursuivre cette expérience qui a été menée, pour évaluer les expériences. Certains pays ont commencé, mais surtout porté à l'échelle, c'est une réflexion peut-être que l'IGBA pourrait mener. Et... Un autre problème qu'il faudra prendre en charge, c'est qu'on a constaté chez les enseignants et étudiants du supérieur en Afrique centrale et au Sénégal, où on a eu de, à travailler avec eux, un intérêt certain. Maintenant, ce qu'il faudrait éviter, c'est que cet intérêt-là tombe à l'eau, c'est-à-dire que les gens se disent, bon, on a fait cette formation, information, après ça, ça ne continue pas. En tout cas, un intérêt était marqué, il faudrait peut-être que l'IGBA se penche à ça pour que cet intérêt ne baisse pas, ne disparaisse pas, mais continue cet esprit de la pédagogie transformationnelle. Voilà donc, euh, Saliou, quelques mots. Et puis, je reste disponible pour, euh, dans les discussions peut-être après, entrer dans certains détails. Merci. Merci beaucoup, professeur Boubacarnia, formateur à l'Université de Dakar. Mais qui intervenait en sa qualité de formateur en constitution de la paix en prévention de l'extrême violence. Merci pour cette présentation pleine d'informations, vraiment.
où vous avez passé en revue le contexte, les contextes pays et les cibles. Euh, vous nous avez parlé des acquis et des contraintes avant de finir par les perspectives d'internalisation. Je pense que les uns et les autres ont pris bonne note, n'est-ce pas, de tout ce que vous avez partagé comme information et que la discussion va se poursuivre dans le chat et au niveau du, du plénière. Merci encore. Now, I am, now we'll, we'll continue this session with the, the next uh, speaker, presenter or panelist, uh, who is Dr. Patrick Tom from South Africa. Dr. Patrick Tom will be talking about the perspective on transformative pedagogy to foster global citizenship education and Southern African liberation history. Dr. Patrick, you with us? Uh, thank Dr. you Patrick. so much. Yeah, um, yes. I, I can okay. hear you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Patrick Tom from Zimbabwe, not South Africa, but uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, South so, Africa. So. <laughs> it's, it's all right. Uh, I currently teach at the University of Manchester, so I'm based in the United Kingdom. I teach politics. Um, so I've been working with uh, uh, UNESCO Rosa, that's uh, the regional office for Southern Africa, and Iqba Arigato uh, on uh, transformative uh, pedagogy for learning to live together in Southern Africa. I'll first look at the background, then uh, um, discuss uh, the workshops that were recently conducted uh, with uh, seven Southern African countries. Uh, then uh, look at three cases uh, of uh, transformative uh, pedagogy. Uh, uh, that's uh, three countries. Um, the Southern African region uh, is one of uh, the most developed regions uh, in Africa, but uh, it does uh, face uh, quite a number of uh, challenges. Uh, challenges relating to violence, uh, it could be political violence, gender-based violence, uh, violent extremism uh, in, some, yeah, in, in some parts of uh, the region. Uh, so political violence, um, so these are some of the, the challenges that uh, you can also talk of xenophobia. So in um, August 2017, uh, um, uh, the Sadiq Council of Ministers um, at a meeting uh, in Eswatini, uh, formerly Swaziland, uh, decided or uh, came up with uh, this uh, decision that uh, global citizenship education values and the Southern African liberation history is uh, be included in the school syllabus. So what they did was to request uh, ministries of education uh, in the region, that, that's uh, the region is uh, 16 member states, uh, to operationalize uh, the decision, uh, the, de uh, the decision of uh, uh, integrating GCD values and uh, Southern African liberation history uh, in teaching and learning uh, in uh, schools uh, in SADC. Uh, this uh, decision would ensure that uh, the younger generation in the SADC region have uh, an opportunity to learn and critically reflect on the history of the liberation struggle uh, in the region. Again, uh, this is also meant to promote uh, regional integration, uh, social cohesion, uh, solidarity, and so forth, uh, given the fact that, uh, of course, I've already mentioned that uh, there are issues relating to xenophobia, uh, political violence, and so forth. Uh, so in October 2019, UNESCO, in partnership with uh, uh, the Asia Pacific Center of Education, for international understanding uh, in Southern Africa organized a regional conference on uh, GCED uh, and UNESCO uh, was uh, tasked with uh, commissioning a comparative mapping uh, study to review uh, GCED content and practices and articulation in curricula and teacher education in the region. Uh, so in August 2020, UNESCO commissioned uh, a desk review of national curricula of secondary schools in SADC member states. 
uh, the aim was to determine the level of integration and uh, teaching of our GCD issues and values uh, in Southern African liberation history. Uh, the report uh, on uh, global citizenship uh, and liberation history in second as uh, curricula in Southern Africa uh, revealed that uh, um, th there was um, a challenge in terms of uh, the lack of uh, a uniform curriculum approach for GCD and Southern African liberation history in Southern Africa. It also revealed that uh, in some member states, uh, there wasn't much emphasis on um, um, the regional aspect of uh, the liberation history. Uh, they tended to focus on the national aspect. Uh, it also revealed that um, the, I mean, there the were other countries uh, which um, like uh, it highlighted four good practices uh, where uh, these uh, countries had uh, integrated elements of uh, uh, global citizenship, uh, education and Southern African liberation history. Um, so uh, uh, drawing on this um, uh, study, UNESCO then commissioned a roadmap on uh, GCD and Southern African liberation history in teaching and learning. Uh, the document uh, provides a guidance on the integration of our GCD and Southern African liberation history in the SADC region. Um, it, uh, it, it was uh, approved uh, in June 2021 uh, by SADC ministers during the joint ministerial meeting. Uh, the other thing that uh, has been developed is uh, the guidebook on transformative uh, pedagogy for learning to live together in Southern Africa. It's a teacher's guide because, uh, of course, when you're doing this, I also need some tools uh, to train uh, the educators, uh, teachers, and curriculum developers. So uh, this uh, guide has been developed in collaboration. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it was developed by ICBA. Uh, then adapted by uh, UNESCO ROSA and also they worked together with uh, Arigato International. And I was also part of the team that uh, developed the, uh, this uh, guide. So it is uh, eight chapters. Uh, the first chapter looks at the context, looking at the Southern African, uh, uh, the Southern African context uh, and also providing tools for conflict analysis um, um, and also it does look at uh, the, uh, these are educational approaches, uh, Southern African liberation history and uh, global citizenship uh, education, which are highlighted as well in the uh, uh, roadmap. Because of uh, local context, uh, it also um, emphasize uh, the local approaches, traditional uh, approaches, uh, practices, philosophies like Ubuntu, uh, which uh, emphasize um, uh, interconnectedness, interdependency, uh, uh, empathy, which was uh, also something that uh, some of the participants uh, uh, noted uh, when they were asked about uh, uh, transformative uh, pedagogy to, uh, in relation to peace. Uh, so it uh, looks at uh, even traditional um, 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 practices such as uh, uh, ILIM in the in Sindevele, uh, which are, these are work parties and also looking at uh, uh, um, uh, other concepts like um, the, in fact, uh, the lending clubs and so forth. So, it, uh, it does uh, look at uh, all these uh, local practice because of the need to, uh, it, uh, to emphasize the local context, which again, uh, have been uh, something that has been talked about by quite a number of um, uh, presenters, including Chioniso when she talked about uh, uh, the experience of Zimbabwe uh, at uh, the higher learning level. So uh, that's uh, the book, uh, it also is, um, Ch a chapter on uh, ethical reflections because uh, that's also crucial that uh, uh, teachers 
and students or learners engage in these uh, ethical reflections is one crucial aspect of uh, transformative uh, pedagogy. Uh, it also looks at key competencies. So these are some of um, Dr. The, Patrick, Tom, you have yeah. a few minutes to wrap up. Thank you. Ah, okay. So um, what has been done in terms of uh, applying this uh, is uh, this, I mean, we have started a pilot project and we, we have held two workshops. Uh, the, on, uh, we aimed at training uh, curriculum developers and teachers. Uh, the first workshop um, was attended by participants from Eswatini, Namibia and South Africa. The other one, 25 July to 28 July. Angola, Mauritius, and Republic of uh, Tanzania. So I'll look at uh, quickly look at uh, the cases from uh, these uh, workshops. Uh, Mauritius uh, is uh, introduced uh, life skills and values education, uh, um, and uh, they've uh, produced uh, a pack for educators. Uh, and this is used for grade nine students in the life skills and values edu uh, education classes. Uh, it, uh, the aim is to enable learners to develop appropriate social and behavioral skills, crucial to help them face and deal effectively with uh, the challenges of uh, the modern society. Uh, they've used the various approaches, the two main approaches that uh, they talked about, active, active activity-based approach where students are actively engaged in dealing with uh, issues pertaining to their context. Uh, uh, it's, uh, they take uh, learner-centered activities, uh, teacher, the teacher is seen as uh, the facilitator, and the emphasis is on building resilience, develop uh, self-regulation, increasing uh, self-awareness, uh, practicing positive relationship and strengthening problem solving skills. Then uh, the school-based uh, project approach where uh, students actively engage in real world and meaningful project aimed at uh, resolving uh, a real world uh, problem. They also engage uh, in teacher training both uh, the, it's also crucial that uh, these uh, teachers are also equipped with uh, these uh, 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 transformative uh, pedagogical approaches and skills, and uh, they use uh, various methods, uh, methods to assess learners, evidence of participation, portfolios, uh, practical activities, performance-based performance uh, tasks. Then uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo emphasizes, uh, emphasis is placed on learner empowerment. Uh, they also engage in teacher training uh, uh, programs. Teachers are seen as facilitators and, uh, and uh, they are encouraged to ask questions that help uh, learners to reflect, come up with uh, responses and solutions. Um, they will take a participatory approach where students are um, asked to do some homework, homework and do some independent research where they come, I mean, they then uh, report back to the class and the other students uh, raise questions. They also take a, a situational approach, uh, also, uh, taking into consideration the current situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the challenges they are facing. And uh, they ask students to look at a situation based on their experience. Uh, they've revised their curriculum and they now have uh, new subjects like uh, life skills. Uh, and the last part uh, is, uh, last example is that of Tanzania. They also use a whole school approach uh, and one example is that environmental conservation where teachers, for example, are allocated uh, a portion of land to plant uh, trees and flowers. And then even technical subject teachers are also encouraged to participate. Uh, surrounding communities also. Then the, the second example is uh, student performance uh, where the war, it's not just the school, but also the community, the parents are involved to ensure that uh, students uh, perform, uh, performance uh, improves. And then the last example relates to Southern African liberation history where it has been uh, integrated in the history subject under the topic nationalism. Uh, students are taught about the nation's role in assisting freedom fighters from other Sadiq countries. Uh, they engage in field trips uh, to Mazimbu uh, where former freedom fighters uh, camps are uh, loc located uh, and also the research on other countries that uh, Tanzania assisted. Uh, thank you so much. Over to you. Thank, you. thank you very much, Professor Tom. I'm sorry, I got I got disconnected at a certain point. I hope you can hear me very well now. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for your informative presentation. Uh, I didn't fully follow it, but I know that you have talked about the desk review and roadmap. You have also uh, shared some information about training workshops and some cases.
from some countries, from workshop held in some countries. So without further delay, I'm now going to Mrs. Uh, Nora Tairi, who is the Central Inspector, Ministry of National Education in Algeria. She'll be talking to, she'll be talking to us about the experience of Algeria perspective and strengthening teacher training. Mrs. Noira, if you can really summarize your intervention in eight, 10 minutes, that would be great. We'd be great, grateful to you. Nora? Okay. Can you hear me? Thank you. Can you hear, yes, can we can you hear, hear me? very well. Yes, very well. Hello. Please go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Nora, maybe you can try to stop your video because we cannot yes. hear you. Yes. Nora, you can stop your video, please. Yes. Yes, it may be better. Afternoon. Nora, your, your, your voice your voice is breaking. Maybe you can move a little bit. Uh, I'm glad to be here today uh, to share with you the Algerian experience in implementing. Yes, I've stopped it now, right now. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. better. better yeah. So Thank I'm you. going to share with you the steps so far crossed in implementing transformative pedagogy. Uh, of course, transformative pedagogy aims at empowering the youth to be resilient and peace, builder, peace builders. And this is uh, through strengthening, strengthening teachers' competency, competencies for peace building and uh, preventing violent extremism. So uh, I will tell you first why, why and uh, how, what facilitated the implementation of the project in Algeria. Actually, there are two main factors. The first factor is the, uh, what existed in, previously in the Algerian educational curriculum, in the national curriculum, and also the uh, teacher training program in Algeria. As for the curriculum, for example, you can, as you say in this slide, all the topics that are included in the syllabi of many subjects like civic, Hello. religious education. Yes. Is it just me or am I the only one who is not hearing anything? You can't hear me. We can hear you, Nora. Maybe Even I'm not uh, hearing as well. Can I we can hear can you. I we can hear you, Lada Claire. We can hear you, Nora. Please proceed. Okay, those great. Who are not listening from the English foot, you can click on the original audio so you can directly listen. Okay. So uh, I sum up. I said that what facilitated the implementation is what already exists in, uh, in the national curriculum. Uh, of uh, uh, and this is in many subjects as uh, civic and religious education, history, and as support text in teaching national and foreign languages. And more than this, there was also a rich uh, teacher training program, uh, for example, as uh, school violence and mediation, shared reflection pro uh, workshops, which uh, have uh, similar similarities with the project we uh, of peace education, peace and resilience building with UNESCO ICBA. Next slide, please. Now, uh, as a, a historical background of the implementation of, uh, of uh, the, the project, uh, we, we had, we attended, this all started in 2018 uh, by a TOT program in Senegal, uh, where a, a team of Algerian uh, uh, inspectors attended to a TOT in uh, in Dakar. Then from this, when when home, we uh, planned three training sessions 
for a core team of 30 teacher trainers who are inspectors also, and this happened in 2019. Uh, but unfortunately, two of which of these trainings were postponed because of COVID-19 pandemic. But uh, in uh, 2000, and, and this is the first se session, the pictures from the first session we had in October 2000, uh, 2019. Uh, so, uh, and the second session uh, was then uh, we resumed the training in uh, March 2021 and had the second session and then uh, the third session in December 2021. So we uh, had uh, the three sessions done and uh, we, we, we have now, we can say that we have a uh, uh, a very good trained team of teacher trainers uh, for the project, uh, for cascading the project in Algeria. So we said that we uh, implemented transformative pedagogy. But transformative pedagogy is can take many meanings according to the context in which we are and, in, uh, and uh, uh, the context of peace in the, in the context it is. It is done. So transformative pedagogy is, of course, an innovative pedagogical approach that empowers both teachers and learners. It, 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 it encourages learners to be reflective and critical thinkers who are able to contribute meaningfully as members of local and global communities. And more. Next slide. Uh, it also uh, redefines the role of teachers. Teachers become facilitators uh, with the disposition, knowledge, skills, and commitment to support students to develop their full potential as peace builders. So uh, the, this is to say that the learner is no more an empty recipient that receives knowledge from uh, the teacher, and the teacher is no more considered as a knowledge transmitter. So uh, uh, when we say transformative pedagogy, it, it directly implies that there is transformation. So what do we transform? What do we for transform exactly in our context? So well, uh, uh, as learning is not limited to acquiring knowledge, as we said in the transformative pedagogy approach, it goes beyond and involves acquiring skills and attitudes. And this can only be uh, obtained if the learner is put in full immersion in real life problem solving situations. So what we target to obtain to transform is behavior, is mindset, is attitude. So learning is no longer limited to transmit in knowledge, but recycling this knowledge, using this knowledge to acquire skills and positive attitudes. Now, uh, as you know, the Algerian context, we have spoken about the Algerian context. The Algerian context is an, in a phase of consolidation and reconstruction. So we need to prepare our youth to be active participants in this process and ensure that a learner acts in classroom as he acts in society and he becomes an active social uh, actor. And this is what we uh, uh, aim to, uh, to obtain through implementing transformative pedagogy. Now, let me tell you about what we have already achieved and what uh, remains. So, Nora, we, Nora, could uh, you summarize that, Nora? Yes, it is. I could think it is. Summarize the, that in uh, one minute. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, sorry. So we uh, cascaded. Uh, we uh, the transition to the core team of teachers, uh, three sessions, and we cascaded these topics from the guide. 
they are, uh, they are uh, of course, we contextualized the topic to the Algerian context. Next slide. Uh, what, what are the outputs of the, uh, the, the, this project? What we have already uh, uh, had as an output, we adopted the Cascade Teachers Training Guide. It is uh, in the draft, uh, draft as uh, for the right now, but we are going to refine it. And we have produced samples of teaching plans or that we can call uh, cards by applying the transformative pedagogy learning process. And we also, um, uh, the cover page of the guide produced in Algeria is drawn by participants and it includes and symbolizes the objectives of the project. Next slide, then the last one. What, is, what, is, what remains? We need to refine the cascade training guide. It will be done soon. Then we start the official cascading to teachers. And we need also to produce more and have the bank of teaching plans uh, and or cards that are produced according to the, uh, to the guides learning process. And of course, we need to monitor the implementation of transformative pedagogy in the classroom and evaluate, of course, the most important part of it is uh, uh, start an evaluation process of the impact on the field. Uh, this is the last, I think, the, uh, and this is the page cover I talked about that will be the page cover of our guide in Algeria. And thank you for your attention. Sorry if I have taken much time as than uh, needed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Noira from Algeria. Thank you for sharing experiences from that country regarding the implementation of uh, transformative pedagogy in terms of uh, achievement and outputs. As well, uh, as well as in terms of uh, way forward. Thank you very much to you. Uh, yes, uh, now we go to You're the welcome. next speaker. Yeah, thank you very much. To the next but not least uh, panelist, Dr. Abate Getahun from Ethiopia, who will be talking to us about the perspective on transformative pedagogy in higher education, curriculum integration, and indigenous knowledge. Dr. Abate, Are you with us? I, we can see your presentation. Professor Abate? Yerus, can you check if yes, yes, yes. Is yes. Ah, okay, yes. good. Thank you very much. You have the floor. Yes. Yeah. Yes, if you can, can summarize you, can in you share, uh, yes, eight yes, ten yes, minutes, yes, that would be great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yes, we are sharing the presentation. Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, give immense thanks to uh, Dr. Yumukumo, Yukuzi, Director of UNESCO, who have been working day and night especially in the peace education. Uh, dear facilitators, eminent participants, uh, my topic, as you can see from the slide, perspective on transformative pedagogy in higher education, focusing on integration in line with indigenous and exogenous knowledge. So uh, my presentation embraces four important points. As you all know, transformative pedagogy is not a new for most of you. I would simply highlight to uh, jog your memory. And the second one deals with indigenous versus exogenous knowledge. And the third one deals with how do you integrate both indigenous and exogenous. And the last one I will highlight elements of transformative pedagogy in curriculum integration. Next slide. Well, as a form of icebreaker, what is transformative pedagogy? This is uh, an icebreaker question. Let's go. As you all know, transformative pedagogy requires a paradigm shift, which is actually, you know, 
we all are preferring to live with the old one. We don't seem to divorce from the old. So, but it needs this paradigm shift, which is moving away from teacher center to learner, from uh, the stage to the innovators, from the dynamic pedagogical aspects, innovative pedagogical aspects. Uh, as you all know, this uh, training has been given and, and peace down on earth starting from 2017, especially we tried. We have found many, many down to earth experiences, peace education, peace clubs and others. So there should be a shift from the uh, a vertical transformation to horizontal and multi-directional aspects. Next slide. It also, uh, we say the transformative pedagogy because it focuses on learner. And there should be an interest in the learner. The learner should be you know, active participants. And the approach should uh, give immense opportunities for learners. And there should be inclusion, democratic citizenship, freedom of expression, respect for difference, Nonviolent transformation of conflict. This ought to be the parts and the parcels of uh, the curriculum content when we are producing curriculum for higher education. Next. And then we we'll, let's let's highlight indigenous and exogenous parts. Let's go. Uh, indigenous knowledge very briefly denotes degree of localization. You know, all societies, all people do have their own patterns, local rules, customs, and resources, especially in Africa, you can find huge, huge cultural rules, cultural tools, cultural explanations, believes this must be related with the exogenous knowledge. And there must not be you know, immense emphasis on the curriculum part by exogenous knowledge. When I say exogenous meaning external knowledge divorced from the local part. So there must be less interference or imposition from external forces or from exogenous knowledge. Next. This hill, it involves dismantling the power relations, social hierarchies, cultural hegemonies that currently underpin the canons, assumed norms, values of inherited curricula, and setting up processes to reimagine more inclusive ways of participating curriculum and pedagogy practices. It can be defined as an activist pedagogy. It is an activist pedagogy. It is a construct that deals with constructive theory or critical pedagogy that examines critically the beliefs, values, knowledge of the area, the indigenous people, and appreciate it, which includes multiple perspectives, this sense of ownership. Next slide. And here is the possibility. How do you how do you cross fertilize? How do you integrate? You know, the exogenous, the indigenous, especially the exogenous communication can be with exogenous one, especially technology transfer, and you know, the knowledge should be indigenous knowledge based. But the exogenous with indigenous and development elements, curriculums, contents. The indigenous again will be married with uh, uh, exogenous with indigenous diffusion theory and the co-option of folk media. And the last one, indigenous with indigenous with cultural continuity and change. So these are the four quadrants that can be uh, merged. There are ways to integrate both the exogenous and the indigenous knowledge with the means of communication. Thank you, continue. Now let's see in detail these four. The first one, how do, how do you just integrate? The exogenous communication of exogenous information. So the communication will be exogenous. The knowledge can be exogenous. This can be then 
I have uh, conducted a research in my PhD, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, why HIV is, is not you know, avoided in Sub-Saharan Africa. I, thought, I was focusing on the communication aspect. So it is possible to use health workers can counsel the, uh, those people who are living with HIV AIDS and take how to take ART or explain the disease to the patient in terms of germ theory by using exogenous communication. Both the, the communication and the knowledge can be integrated here. Second one, go on. Indigenous communication of indigenous information. Now the indigenous information is transmitted almost exclusively through indigenous channel. There are two types of communication in this quadrant. These are intergenerational and lateral communication. And intergenerational communication is the passing down of knowledge from the father to the son, mother to daughter, teacher to people. The lateral is the spread of information among peers. So the indigenous with indigenous is uh, in the lateral and intergenerational communication can be used. And then third one, go on. Indigenous communication of exogenous information. This can be used by using diffusion communication system. In this system, it is possible to suggest there are innovators and opinion leaders. So we can use that opinion leaders. So, Abama. And then the outsiders. I want to zone. That was zone. Rather than by the local people, so there must be cross fertilizing with indigenous one. And the fourth one. Last one. Colleagues, please, if you are not speaking, please mute your uh, microphone. Thank you very God. much. Yes. Continue. 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 Please continue, doctor. The next slide, please. And the last one, the last method, uh, exogenous communication with indigenous information. In this part, so when the exogenous indigenous, there is in, in an imposition, some of the cultural ways, the indigenous method is assumed by some, there is slanted eyes. <laughs> Therefore, they, they call it one's so practice is scientific, and the other one is unscientific and mythical. It is good to share best experiences by cross fertilizing the global and the local by focusing on shared culture to attain communication effectiveness. So, some of the cultures, there is no hierarchy here. There should be platform both the indigenous and the exogenous. Continue. And the last one, how do you bridge such rifts? There is a gap anyway. When you design curriculums, the most importantly in African curriculum, there is you see, a huge gap. The indigenous knowledge and the exogenous knowledge are not fully married. How do you do that? Let's go on. This is the question. So this can be done by cross-fertilizing the exogenous knowledge with the indigenous such as the local community's traditional technology, social, economic, philosophical learning grounded in spiritual skills, practices, and ways of being in nature should be integrated in the curriculum. It should be cross fertilizing. It encompasses many areas from farming to law, from psychology to mathematics, which can be boosted in all walks and talks of life, mainly in Africa, which is mosaic of Antarctic culture. So it should be cross fertilization. Now let's go to in relation with elements of transformative pedagogy. How do you do with that? Let me highlight. Dr. Abate, Dr. Yeah. Abate, can you please summarize that? Yeah, yeah, I can summarize. Thank you. Go on, please. Thank you. So slide move. Well, uh, how do you do that? Here are the six key elements of transformative pedagogy. I can summarize here. So the first one is when you produce curriculum, we should uh, focus on both exogenous and indigenous knowledge. When you bring the exogenous knowledge, we have to be context sensitive. It's not only sensitive, we should also be responsive. 
In that case, the learners have their own, you know, context, knowledge, beliefs, attitudes that should be included in the in their curriculum. The second point here also is element is safe learning environment. Uh, when you design curriculum, it should be aligned with the learning, the same environment. If the environment is not married with the classroom, what the students learning in the classroom, if, if, if it fails to fully married with the external world, there is no transmission of knowledge that, that, that remains in the classroom. And the third one, participation and collaboration is important. The learners are not there passive receivers. They are there you know, to participate from the production, the preparation of curriculum and the methodology. They should be fully participated. And the fourth one, role modeling. You see, the curriculum, the content that are you know, included in the curriculum should be stemmed from their role model. There are role models in all works of uh, curriculum. So learners should be informed from their own role model. And said one whole school environment, the parents, the teachers, the students should participate there. And the last one, students should support and should lead the action. So the, uh, there must be the activity should be, the task should be designed with the student. This is not a teaching process. Rather, it should be the learning process. Therefore, when you talk about integration, the curriculum design, the methodology, the practice should be, you know, merged with the indigenous knowledge. But the reality is most of our curriculums are taken from others exogenous. This ought to be then in both formal and informal activities. To sum up, in a brief term is, when you design, you know, our curriculum, it should be immensely focused on the indigenous knowledge, which is rich, and that can be uh, practiced down towards. In all walks of time, especially in agriculture, you can find huge experiences. In peace, you can find huge experiences that can alleviate the problem if we stemmed from indigenous knowledge. But we are not successful, Most, mostly in Africa, this is, Ignored. Thank you very much. Very much, Dr. Abate uh, Getahum from Ethiopia. Thank you for sharing us uh, uh, some elements regarding the way uh, transformative pedagogy is uh, implemented in Ethiopia and uh, the elements also about the integration of indigenous and exogenous knowledge and the way we should do it. I would like to give a round of applause to all our panelists for the informative data oh, they have provided and the insightful ideas they have provided regarding the way forward. Yes. Thank you so very much. Now we're going to the next session, which is the last but one, the plenary discussion, which will be run by our colleague, uh, Eleonora Murad. Of, uh, Eleonora, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Sal, and thank you once again for all the panelists, and particularly really for highlighting the importance of contextualization and indigenous knowledge. I mean, as we know, that is like one of the milestones of transformative pedagogy, and thank you for really showing how the different countries and the different regions have, uh, have taken these, uh, and the different practices as well. We saw indigenous practices from Southern Africa, from the Sahel, and now also Professor Sarabate illustrated us uh, how the importance of this and how this is a constructivist approach that indeed has to depart uh, from the local knowledge and the local experiences. Before we start with the plenary sharing today, I wanted to bring some of the highlights uh, and some of the discussions that we have had together in the last two days as well. I mean, I know some of you are joining today for the first time, some of you have been throughout uh, we have used uh, a, a technological tool that is called a Google Jamboard. And the purpose of this Jamboard was really to record the conversations and the recommendation of the two days of experience sharing that we have had before this one, and to bring them in this third day, helping us to reflect, helping us to contextualize them, but ultimately really helping us to strengthen this approach. 
So these are some of the recommendations that we retained uh, from day one, when we looked both at the opportunities, but also the challenges, uh, particularly looking at young people. I mean, young people have been at the core of this program the, throughout the years. There have been specific trainings designed for young people. There have been a youth guide that has been written to inform their efforts in uh, carrying forward the transformative approach. And we really looked at opportunities and challenges. We said how we need to be more strategic, particularly with policies, particularly with frameworks. And, and this also was beautiful to see when Professor Patrick was talking about the opportunities, for example, in the SADC region with the frameworks for global citizenship, when Nora from Algeria reminded us how the program is now ready to be scaled up and involve an higher number of, of young teachers. But also there was a point about the simplification and the localization of the language. And we saw really how important it is that the guides, that the resources are contextualized and they really respond to the local needs and they really address in local language so that everybody is fully empowered to understand the contextual dynamics. So this, I mean, the screenshot that you see here, these are all materials that will be shared with you. But these are really some of the recommendations that we have collected in day one during the youth forum. A lot of it really speaks to the great recommendations that we have had from the four speakers today, both uh, in matters of inclusivity, also in matters of really uh, creating more and more spaces for, for interactions, for dialogue, and really for raising awareness about strategies that can help the education sector to address and prevent violence and violence extremism as well. In day two, we moved uh, from this uh, level also looking more broadly, not only at the challenges and opportunities for the transformative pedagogy approach, but also at how to enhance youth engagement and participation for peace. I mean, we know that youth are really key actors in peacemaking, but what strategies can we foresee? How can we strengthen their engagement? How can we improve the way we listen to their voices and really involve them in decision making. And again, there have been a series of recommendations for the program that we could roughly articulate in three levels. I mean, looking at the first level as being very much the micro level, individual level, where we need to really uh, offer more programs for empowerment and capacity building, both of young people to have the skills, the attitudes, and, and to nurture the values for peace, but as well as for teachers, so strengthening those capacities in teachers. And we saw from the experiences that Professor Nian and shared with the survey of the 330 teachers, how important it is to present these skills, to create these opportunities so that those, these skills can really be acquired. But we also saw a community level. So the need to really promote schools as way of engagement with the community. So really promote education as a continuum that starts in the schools, that starts in the classrooms, but really then promotes the the engagement and the reinvestment of the capacities that are acquired in school in the community, involving really families, caretakers, faith leaders, civil society, so that there is really a continuum in the peace building. And the last level of recommendations was very much at the level of policy making, at the level of frameworks, because these are very important then for ministries of education to really establish a liaison in terms of curriculum, in terms of subjects, and to really try and mainstream the, the, the peace education and the transformative pedagogy for peace approach in this way. So this is a little bit what has been discussed in the two days before. And before we move to present uh, what is going to be our next endeavor in terms of the lessons learned booklet, I wanted to stop here for a minute and give the opportunities for those countries that haven't shared to share. I know there is a number of countries that have prepared to take the floor today with some recommendations, but also with additional inspiring stories. So I wanted to invite our delegates to, to really raise their hands and share in this plenary other stories, other examples that can really help uh, us uh, framing 
uh, the program and, and think of further adaptations. So colleagues, the floor is yours. You can raise your hand and then I can, I can give you the floor. I believe Mako from Lesotho has prepared to take the floor and share with us, Dr. Mako. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, uh, I am not the one who will be taking the floor, mm -hmm. but rather Dr. Leporto, my colleague will is the one who will uh, uh, take the floor. Uh, I don't know if uh, Jerusalem is able to share the slides on her behalf, or if my colleague is able to share the slides uh, by herself, then it's okay. Doctor? Hello? Doctor, are you able to share the slides? I I'm trying to do that. Uh, can share the yes. slides. Can you see? Let's can you see the slides? If, if no, if, if you are you are unable to do that, uh, can Jerusalem do that on your behalf? Yes, I share. I have shared okay. the slides, uh, but uh, great, I doctor. Would like to ask you to doctor, be are you able, able to see the slides now? Yes, we can see the slides. We yes, just I'm, I'm able to see. Thank okay, you. right. So you hear just, me? Just, just tell uh, Jerusalem which slides you, you, you really want to touch on. I don't think all of them, uh, you need to okay, talk to you? all of okay, the slides. Great. Okay, great. great. Just a few slides that she, she, okay. she wants to do. Yes. All right, okay. Uh, can we go to slide, slide number three? Slide number three. Okay. Yes, although it is not clear. Anyway, in, in, in slide number three. Um, I think it is slide, slide number some, five. Something is it? Slide number five, I think that's slide number five. Uh, no, it was three actually. And the, uh, okay. Uh, in fact, in slide number three. Oh, okay. Talk to me. Yes. In, in that slide, these are the objectives. Am I clear? Yes. Am continue. I clear enough? Yes, continue. Okay, I'm saying, yes, in this slide number three, Actually, these are the objectives of uh, the workshop that was that was held previously. And I just want to say, uh, in our previous report that was done by uh, Dr. Matila, then uh, the, the, the objectives of the workshop that was held in December were, 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 were stated. So um, I, I won't go through those objectives again. Uh, because of time, what I want to do now is, is just to show some of the uh, new uh, approaches of new events that happened after the previous uh, presentation that was working on what we have managed to do since uh, the inception of, of, of this project. And I just want to, to, to highlight that uh, we are beginning at the beginning of our because we started to be involved in this project just last year, 2021, around that. And the first um, event, the first activity that we were able to do is that of training about 20 participants uh, through the TOT approach. Then from there, we, 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 we tried to do, uh, to, to plan on other things while we were waiting for the sensitization of the policy makers, which only happened yesterday. But in between, 
in between that time and yesterday when we, when we managed to, to do that, there are some small activities or initiatives that I can refer to, especially in particular to some networks that we managed to 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 to, to establish like we established networking with the uh, one institute for peace and leadership. Can we go to slide 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 um, four? Oh no no no. Another one. Yeah, number five. So number six. Another one, please. Okay. Another one. Number eight. Like Which uh, title do you want to present? Yes. This one. This is the one. Okay. No, the previous. Yeah, this, this is the new. This is the new. Yeah. This is the new activity since our, 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 our previous presentation on the developments on our site in Lesotho. Um, where slide number eight. Slide number eight. That's slide number eight. Slide eight. Yes. Uh, here we are having a workshop where the, 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 policy, the policy makers were being sensitized about the, 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 the education for people or transformative pedagogy towards uh, Peace building. Then from there, I was talking about other, 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 other initiatives that are happening at individual level, and some of them are happening at, um, at, at various institutions. Like in the case of a slide, I think it's slide twelve. So if we can go to slide twelve, yeah. Yes. Slide twelve shows some of those activities that are coming from our partnership or our, our, our involvement in the network with the Mushesho One Institute for Peace and, and, uh, and Leadership. Because we are involved, we are part of that uh, institute because of the experience that we gained through the training where the Faculty of Education is being represented in that institute. And in this institute, the, the, the focus is that of promoting peace and ethical leadership. So some of the activities are those that we involve youth to participate in events that um, are concerned with peace promotion. Like in this case, uh, that is me with our visually impaired learner where we had attended an international youth day commemoration where the theme was intergenerational generational solidarity. So the aspect of solidarity has got a very great significance in, in, in promotion of peace and, uh, and, and ethics. And the message there, the message that was passed is, is just that engagement and participation of everyone. That is why we even have the, 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 the word or the concept inclusion. That is nobody should be left behind. And this man okay. that uh, can you also I'm with here is a visually impaired learner who was sent for training by a court when he went for training in Zimbabwe to train in issues of peace and leadership. That is some of those activities that are, are happening uh, after our previous, uh, in the, uh, our previous presentation. Then when we look at slide, slide 14, Okay, in fact, uh, I will still go back to slide 30 because it is what it also shows some of those activities. In slide 48, the demonstration of some activities uh, still responding to the theme, to 2022 theme of intergenerational uh, solidarity in promoting peace at community level. So, this is uh, this, the slide here are showing youth young people and children playing together with adults uh, before, before the games, before the sport, in the morning sessions, there was a, there was a, a dialogue where they, there was community, there was dialogue at community level about how young people can be involved, how can, be, how can they take leadership in ensuring uh, peace 
and security in their own communities. This has happened. This was triggered by a lot of events that happened in that community where people, where one woman was raped while washed by, 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 by young children, and another elderly woman was being raped and then stabbed with a knife. There were several um, occasions of violence. And then as a community, we tried to think Yopano, about what please, we could do. Can you do. wrap up, please? And we Hello? only remain with three minutes. Can you okay. wrap up, please? Thank you. Okay. okay. By wrapping up, let me just uh, indicate that there isn't much so far that we can say we're able. We are still in the in the process of planning uh, ahead of what is actually going to happen. But as we are waiting for other things like policy, we are continuing to be active and trying to be initiative with some other activities that promote peace. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, you Dr. Telefoto from uh, Lesotho. I think this was a very comprehensive experience. And I think this experience also shows us again, the different level of engagement, the different resources that you have been able to use and also how inclusive you have been in the approach in terms of the variety of learners that, that were included. So thank you for sharing this with us. The slides, the slide deck will be shared in full with all the other participants for them to have this, this reference of the Lesotho experience. And uh, I, before we proceed, I would like to see if they to share with us about their experience or if they would like to share with us any recommendation. Okay, I think maybe uh, if you want to, to share, please raise your hand. In the meanwhile, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly present the next steps. So we have been working at the Transformative Pedagogy for Peace, Resilience, Building and Prevention of Violent Extremism in Africa. Uh, it's, this is a booklet of lessons learned. So the, the goal for this booklet is really to collect all the stories that have been shared during this experience sharing, but also all the stories that have been shared in the webinars, in the webinar series that took place from the spring and also the beginning of, of, of this summer. So really this booklet wants to collect the different adaptation, the different contextualizations, the local resources that have been generated as examples of good practices for other countries that might also wanna join the program or for colleagues in the same country that would like to, to participate. So the booklet at the moment is still on a draft format. We are looking to have a framing uh, chapter where the transformative pedagogy approach will be explained, but in short, particularly looking at the purposes of this approach, the key elements, and the, the very three fundamental uh, building blocks of the approach that are fostering ethical reflections, empowering learners, so learners and young people really as agents of transformation, and also the assessment part. So how can we assess this approach? As Professor Niane reminded us early on today when we looked at the context of the Sahel country, it is very important to relate transformative pedagogy approach to already existing frameworks. So in the Sahel countries in West Africa, this is the uh, competencies-based approach. And we can see how then to integrate those assessment measures that are more qualitative and that can really track the progress in the learning of skills, attitudes, and values for peace. And then the second part of the booklet is really looking at showcasing all the stories. So really showcasing the experiences that you have shared with us. We have reached out to many of you asking for you to fill in a short survey and I'm sure our colleague Xavier now can also put the link for the survey in the chat in case you want to, to tell us your experience via the survey. This is still possible and we will be recording the story. But we're also open, of course, to have one-on-one -on -one short interviews to record your experience. And of course, for many of you that have prepared presentations and that have submitted stories throughout these last months, those stories will be featured in the booklet. And 
Today is uh, rather than a launch of the booklet, what we aim to do is really an open invitation for all countries and all young people connected today to submit your stories, to let us know how you have used the transformative pedagogy approach, how you have adapted it in your context, what opportunities and what challenges have you encountered in this, what can be improved, what are the key recommendations. As an example, each story, you know, this is the general framework. I think you are all rather familiar with this uh, photo and with the six building blocks with many of you. We have uh, worked at these building blocks in boxes, in, in groups. We have connected every time each of these key elements of the pedagogy with the local context, with the local frameworks. And, and this is, you know, this is really our our guiding, uh, you know, uh, key principles and what guides the transformative pedagogy approach that, as we always say, as an approach, it doesn't have to be taken in block, but every element of this approach can be contextualized that can help uh, to really add on and to really complement the existing frameworks. Each story will be featured uh, essentially in one pager of, of the document. I mean, right now I'm taking, for example, uh, the story from our colleagues from Malawi, how they have implemented the approach. It's uh, We can see that there are similarities with what the colleagues from Lesotho did in terms of raising awareness, cascading to the teachers, but also have really workshops uh, focusing more on ethics and, and really trying to go towards the establishment of peace clubs. I mean, we have seen these uh, from the very first days with examples from Kenya and Tanzania how peace clubs can really be conducive places for dialogues that can help schools to really have open dialogue and safe spaces to talk about peace. But also how important is that these peace clubs are registered, are institutionalized, and that they receive the support and resources that are needed. Here we have, for example, another story of implementation from Libya and what, what has happened in this context there since the project was kickstarted in 2020. Here we go with the Algerian experience that Nora has just uh, uh, reflected upon at the beginning of, of today's session. So each story will be featured like this with one pager. If you're going to submit pictures, we certainly be glad of that and we're gonna feature that. As Nora said, for example, the cover of the transformative pedagogy guide in Algeria was indeed designed during one of the contextualization workshops. So that cover will certainly feature as an highlight in the, in the experiences as this is really a product that has been contextualized and that has built on the local knowledge and local resources. I know that the team in Djibouti is also contextualizing the guide. The Niger team has, has done the same. So we would really like to know more about this stories and to collect them in this booklet of experiences. I mean that the ideal will be that each of the 22 countries that have joined the program so far could be featured and that we could have stories of adaptation and stories of contextualization from all these different contexts. I you know, again, I would like to open the floor. Let me know if there are questions, if there are, you know, recommendations, suggestions. I can see that Xavier has put uh, to the chat the link to both the English survey and French survey. But as we said, we are available to also have a chat and, and see with you about your story and record it for the booklet. Arfang, I see your end up. Please, you can unmute yourself and take the floor. Arfang from Senegal. Heureux de participer à ce troisième webinaire qui aujourd'hui va boucler la série que nous avons entamée depuis mardi et qui nous a beaucoup enrichi. C'est une série de webinaires qui vient à son heure. C'est la raison pour laquelle nous remercions et félicitons une part cette opportunité qu'elle nous offre. Nous remercions également la participation sénégalaise à travers le directeur de l'INEAD, le collègue 
l'inspecteur Alim Badali Diouf pour son mot d'introduction, mais également euh, la participation de notre professeur formateur, le professeur Bokarnia, que nous remercions au passage. Et, euh, nous avons quelques éléments à partager en disant que si nous saluons l'opportunité de ces de cette série de webinaires, c'est qu'elle vient à son heure parce que euh, il faut avoir le courage de le dire, la violence s'installe petit à petit et c'est à nous tous de la combattre pour qu'elle euh, véritablement quitte notre planète. Et pour cela, hier, nous avons déjà partagé en disant ce que ce qu'il faut poser comme acte pour aider les jeunes. Et pour cela, nous, nous avons pensé à au développement durable, parce que c'est dans le développement durable qui répond aux besoins du présent sans compromettre la capacité des générations futures de répondre aux leurs, leurs besoins. C'est-à-dire que cette planète, nous l'avons héritée et nous avons l'obligation de la transmettre aux générations futures dans de bonnes conditions. Et pour cela, il nous faut former des citoyens du monde, des éco-citoyens. Et en cela, nous devons nous appuyer sur l'objectif de développement durable numéro 4, assurer l'accès de tous à une éducation de qualité sur un pied d'égalité et promouvoir les possibilités d'apprentissage tout au long de la vie. Ça, voilà des leviers sur lesquels il nous faut nous appuyer. Et plus spécifiquement au niveau des écoles et établissements, il faut installer les clubs, les clubs de paix, les clubs d'environnement, les gouvernements scolaires. Parce que dès le bas âge, avec un principe du faire en se faisant. Quand les enfants euh, installent, on installe avec les gouvernements scolaires, les clubs, ils, sont, ils vont se faire, mais ils, en, se fait, en, fait, ils, en, se, en faisant, ils, ils, ils vont se, euh, se faire eux-mêmes. Et c'est de ça qu'il s'agit. Ainsi, ils grandiront avec un esprit de construction. Mais pour cela, je dois dire déjà, dans notre pays, le Sénégal, dans la loi d'orientation, ça apparaissait déjà, la loi d'orientation 1991. Euh, la loi d'orientation euh, de 91-22 du 16 février 1991, euh, parmi lesquelles, dans les années, nous avons retrouvé maintenir la nation dans le courant du progrès contemporain. Que l'éducation nationale, euh, elle tend à développer l'esprit de coopération et de paix entre les hommes. Si dans chaque pays, dans les lois d'orientation, dans euh, le type de citoyen à former. On cherche à former un, un citoyen du monde, euh, un, un éco-citoyen. Parce que je dois dire actuellement, certes, il y a des frontières, mais les frontières ne peuvent pas arrêter quelques fléaux, quelques dangers. Je n'en veux pour preuve que le virus à COVID-19, on ne pouvait pas l'arrêter et ça quitte de pays à un autre. Donc il s'agit pour chaque citoyen de se former et de voir comment faire pour protéger son prochain. Et ça, c'est important. Et, et enfin, pour terminer, je, je voudrais partager encore en évitant le retour de la correspondance scolaire. Certes, euh, de plus en plus, il y a moins d'écrits. Euh, nous faisons des efforts dans nos classes avec les productions d'écrits. Et nous pouvons installer davantage la correspondance intrascolaire, interscolaire, interpays, international, entre différentes écoles. Et il y aura des échanges sur les, les cultures et nous allons partager les cultures des uns et des autres. C'est en ce moment que nous allons comprendre que ce sont nos différences qui nous unissent. Voilà, donc, euh, mesdames et messieurs, quelques, quelques échanges, quelques partages que je voudrais faire avec l'ensemble des participants, en remerciant encore une fois Iqba, en remerciant tout le monde, en disant que ça a été très enrichissant et vivement les prochaines sessions. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci Arfang et merci beaucoup pour l'engagement de l'équipe du Sénégal et pour la continuation et implémentation du programme au Sénégal. Merci beaucoup. Uh, dear Bramwell, I see that you have your hand up. You can proceed to unmute. The floor is yours. Bramwell Vaqueza, please go yes, ahead. Yes, hello. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you. I'm Bramwell from Kenya. Uh, I'm one of the youth who implemented the, the project this year. Uh, my, 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 my suggestion is that we adopt the youth to youth engagement in these peace trainings 
uh, because while we were training, we trained the youth and the students, high school students. And what we realized was that if we use these students, we can achieve much because if we, 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 we would like to engage the, the students from the schools we trained, to train other schools while we supervise, it will be easier and more cheap because uh, we shall use the students as ambassadors, as peace ambassadors, than us training each time a new group, which is uh, very difficult to follow up. Uh, but my suggestion is that we adopt the youth to youth engagement. Thank you so much. But the, the, uh, the pedagogy form of training was best because the activities, for example, the peace, uh, the root causes, the tree, the human knot were very effective and participants were very happy while we engaged them in the trainings. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Bramwell. So indeed, as we said, it's very much the cooperation and the co-construction and always making sure that uh, learners and young people have, have a voice and that we can listen to these recommendations and work together with them at the implementation. Because yes. we are running short of time and we really still want to have a last Mentimeter with you all, I hope that I can take one last intervention from Joel who had raised the hand earlier. And then I would like to invite the other ones raising their hands to make the comments in the chat so that we can still have one last Mentimeter to record everybody's opinion and then move to the formal closing of today. Joel, Paco, the floor is yours. We, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Nora. Merci beaucoup pour la, la parole. Je suis Joël, je suis de la République démocratique du Congo, je suis membre de l'organisation de, de la société civile. Et il s'est peu qu'il s'avérait que chez nous, à la République démocratique du Congo, le programme a connu certaines difficultés parce que nous n'étions pas informés du programme de, 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 de renforcement de capacité à travers la pédagogie transformationnelle. Et nous, à notre niveau, et personnellement, j'ai fait un effort afin de, de, de mobiliser ma structure pour voir dans quelle mesure on peut éclater encore le programme et jusqu'à présent, nous sommes en tête de la, de la très certaines difficultés suite à l'implantation parce que nous l'avons connu l'année passée et nous sommes en cours de travail. Alors, je voudrais poser la question à, à vous si ces retards-là ne pourra pas causer des, des, des problèmes dans le partage de l'expérience parce que nous, nous sommes encore en cours de l'élaboration du programme et nous n'avons pas encore fini avec cette activité. Merci, merci Joël, merci pour votre question. Donc, on, vous pouvez quand même partager l'histoire que vous avez, les plans que vous avez, et on pourra voir bilatéralement, disons, entre vous et l'IGBA, euh, combien de temps on, on va attendre pour euh, la soumission des histoires. Donc, merci pour ça. On, on vous félicite, dans tout cas, dans l'implémentation euh, du programme et dans le développement du programme. Ça, c'est très important. Et bien entendu, il y a des retards qu'il faut considérer, mais on, on, on vous félicite vraiment pour la formulation du programme. I think, uh, so as, as promised, and if my colleague Xavier is ready, we would like to launch one Mentimeter. We have prepared two Mentimeters for today. So the first one, it's very much connected with the last intervention. Yes, exactly. Can I come in before you, we go to yes. the Mentimeter? Um, yes. Just to add on the last speaker, uh, there are some uh, challenges on the country in two countries, especially those countries. Uh, who, which are out of the 24 countries that we are previous from the IC and are not, they were not uh, the direct targets of the uh, program. And that's why the delay is there because we are looking for another funding and so on. And that is the reason uh, behind the delay. But just to indicate that uh, it you know, was not the, 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 was not the target, target of the, this and last year's tax reason behind. But we will find a way and we'll continue postponing this thing as to what we are looking at them in the Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jerusalem. And it is indeed important to note ICPA commitment to really go on and above the challenges and to find a way, as you said, to really support all countries despite the delays. So we really encourage everyone to continue to stay commitment, to work on the action plans and to share those action plans with us so that we can also provide technical support where needed, provide resources. And I see also the message from Kadra from Djibouti and the fact that indeed Djibouti is trying to integrate the competencies of the transformative pedagogy approach in the new curriculum. And as I said also before, Djibouti is also working at their local guide, so really customized and contextualized to the Djibouti context. So thank you, Dr. Kadra, for this, for this comment. Yes, Crimson, I know Dr. Jerusalem was a little bit cut, but she was really replying to Joel and to the fact that uh, despite the delays, ICVA will continue to support these countries. So it is important to work at the action plans and to keep this open communication channel with ICBA, including submitting now the stories of implementation that you have so far, documenting them also with photos, with resources, if you have developed, as we really open to include all inputs in the guide that, uh, that we are designing. So I see there are many comments in the chat and, uh, and uh, really uh, Jerusalem is addressing those. Uh, Xavier, if I can ask you now to go over with the Mentimeter, this is really our question for today, and it is related to these last points. So what actions can we take? What uh, commitments to strengthen and enhance the existing initiatives for the transformative approach in your context? Uh, Xavier, over to you for the more detailed instructions on this. Sure. Um, so as Eleanor previously said, we have two final questions for you all um, the inter uh, so to encourage interaction. So the first question for you all is available in all three languages. So what did you take and plan to commit to strengthening slash enhancing the existing initiative on the transformative approach in your context after this experience sharing? If every, uh, anyone could uh, contribute by uh, uh, summarizing their thoughts in about three words. And the way to do this is either going to www.menti.com and use the code in front of your screen um, to enter the, the, the Menti meter. So the code is 10409845. Once again, uh, 10409845. Or you can also answer the chat and we'll be sure to add uh, your contribution to the Menti meter property. Um, so thank you.
Okay, Xavier, I think we have received some inputs. Already, I can see. Well, can you can you show the screen from before so that we can see? Yeah, so integration of the transformative pedagogy, creation of a mentee program, working with all the other stakeholders, both formal and non-formal level, having an effective communication line for the cascading, engaging with the policy level, as we said, ensuring the feedback mechanism, integrating the local knowledge, so the integration, the connaissance autochtone in the curriculum, context sensitivities, open an office for peace activities in Zambia, continuing the professional development for teachers. So these are very strong commitments that for sure can enhance and strengthen the implementation of the transformative pedagogy approach, creation of a platform where young teachers and students can network and can share about the initiatives that can also be a, a way for monitoring and documenting the impact. Uh, and again, having a plan for monitoring, ensuring the information flow. So thank you for these very, very helpful commitments and recommendations. We will collect all of these and indeed this is needed to continue to implement the program in a holistic way and to document also the results that we obtain. Before we go, for the formal closing, I know everybody is, is continuing to submit and, and really thank you, yes. A program made their encounter. So yes, the having meetings where all the partners, as we said, this is a whole stakeholder approach. It's a whole school approach that the transformative pedagogy has. So it's very important to create opportunities for the partners to meet, for community engagement, really bringing peace education outside the classrooms, outside the schools, and prioritizing this reinvestment in the community. So thank you very much for all those beautiful sharings and commitments. Uh, we will proceed now to the very final question. And this is a question that I know many of you that joined the workshops have uh, had over and over and again. We have had the three days of sharing. Lots of stories have been uh, presented. Lots of recommendations have been provided. How do you feel? So in one word, how do you feel about these three days? Uh, Xavier, over to you for the more detailed instructions. Yes, uh, so it's, it's the same Mentimeter, so it's the same code. And uh, if you are looking at this for your smartphone, you should be able to see the next question. If you're also looking at this for your computer, you should also be able to answer, uh, yes. And I think, Sal, as the Mentimeter populates, I think we can leave the screen on and, and leave enough time for everybody to, to really find the right words to express this. But maybe, Sal, I know we are a bit late with time, so I would hand over to you to start the formal closing while we're still populating the, the Mentimeter. So, oh, Sal, great. to you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you very much, Eleonora. Thank you, dear participants, for your very, really insightful contributions. Uh, while populating the, 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 the Mentimeter, I think we can go to the, to the formal closing session. Uh, for the closing session, we have the honor to have with us uh, Dr. Yumiko Yokozeki, Director of UNESCO IGBA, Dr. Rooks Ako, Senior Analyst at the Department of Political Affairs, Peace and Security African Union, and His Excellency Ambassador Toshihiko Uriuchi, uh, mis uh, Mission of Japan to the African Union. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over the floor to Dr. Rooks Ako for his remarks. Dr. Rooks, the floor is yours. Um, good afternoon and uh, thank you so much. Um, this has been really, really a fantastic um, couple of days and I, I can't um, but stress that it's been really impressive um, the way um, you know, young peace builders have turned out and how they've been really active in, in um, all the, the, the process. I'm really, really um, 
glad um, at that. I think the one thing that has come out, you know, really big for me, um, uh, Jerusalem, forgive me for reading your message, but I think this encapsulates the way these engagements also spur um, those of us within the policy spaces and challenge us to do uh, a whole lot more. So while all these conversations were going on, uh, Yeru sent me a message to say that, you know, from these conversations, it is obvious that youth initiatives, which need to be addressed, are plentiful and that we need um, as organizations, you know, UNESCO and the AU to be more proactive in trying to um, resource mobilize. And this is not simply financial, but also um, taking on from one of the suggestions I heard, the, the, the resource that resides in young people themselves. Um, and this is how we can begin to, you know, think of processes wherein um, the young people, such as those that have been involved in these conversations in the last couple of days, can be used as um, the resource that we need not only to drive the message of um, the, this pedagogy and the essence of um, education and PCVE, but also um, to, in a sense, contribute their, in their own ways to the, you know, broader um, youth peace and security landscape. Um, of course, um, I don't want to take too much time. Uh, because now, honestly, I am <laughs> engaged in another meeting trying to do some uh, mobilization for uh, uh, some youth activity. But I really, really want to be, you know, uh, humble in saying thank you so much to all the partners that have uh, come together, uh, the, the, the government of Japan, for making this happen. And um, I think you all have challenged us and will take on the challenge as we um, uh, have always done together and being able to deliver, you know, uh, collaboratively. I am left rest assured as I, um, you know, uh, give this thanks to say that this is not the last you've heard. This is a process that we've been engaged in for over a couple of years, I think before COVID, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and it's not ending here. This is just, you know, um, one of the bus stops of this uh, journey to ensure that uh, the, the, the now generation and the future generation are um, given that opportunity not to learn from you know the hard experience of PCVE, but to learn you know from the books what these things mean, how they can be mitigated, how they can be avoided, how they can be resolved. Uh, so let me let me stop here uh, uh, so I don't take uh, more time. I, I see we've over 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 spent time by by a few ten minutes or so. Uh, but uh, colleagues, it's been a humbling experience, like I said before, and this this is what. Uh, gives us as individuals, as a program to keep pushing. And for that, I say to the young folks, thank you so much for that push you give us to ensure that we respond to you and our responses are relevant, timely, and sustainable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Roos. Thank you for your commitment beside UNESCO IGBA, for your commitment to, for keeping it up and uh, strengthening the collaboration for a better way forward. So we really thank you. You were here at the beginning and you were here at the end, which shows really that you believe in that. Thank you very much. Now uh, I'm going to hand over the floor to Dr. Yumiko Yokozeki, uh, Director of UNESCO IGBA uh, for her final remarks. Thank you very much, Saliu. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Good. His Excellency Ambassador Toshihiko, Ahoriuchi, um, the ambassador of Japan to the African Union and my uh, dear colleague, and the Dr. Rooks of African Union, our dear friend, dear colleagues and friends. Sincerest of my apologies that I could not join you in the opening today. I had an urgent meeting and I'm really sorry. I have been participating in the last 60 minutes or so in this session and I am impressed with the level of engagement. I'm delighted to know that the stories keep coming in and the different countries are adopting and adapting the transformative pedagogy. I would like to congratulate all the panels, partners and the colleagues for the fruitful discussion that we have had for the past three days. All sessions were indeed very insightful and thought-provoking and it brought some hope 
for the future in this very challenging time. I see the Mentimeter and then I see the word inspired and empowered. That's very encouraging because the time is very difficult now and uh, that's the time we should have hope. And this session did give us some hope. The three day experience sharing demonstrated that the education is truly transformative for itself and also to a wider society. As uh, many of the presenters touched upon, Transformative pedagogy brings a truly holistic vision into education to transform knowledge, attitude, and skills, and let learning to go beyond the mind and connect the heart and actions. This session made me think of our four pillars of learning, which is a learning to know, learning to do, and learning to live together and learning to be. We are making the young people and then not so young people like ourselves learning to live together and the learning to be a responsible and a peaceful citizen. For the, first five, uh, for the past five years, UNESCO ICBA has worked with more than 50 higher education and the teacher training institutions in over uh, 24 countries in Africa in order to ensure that the educators and teachers are capacitated. We also made efforts that the young people are provided with the training and the support that are required to engage with their societies as active citizens, active agents for peace. It has been very encouraging and inspiring to, to see and hear how all the presenters infuse their transformative pedagogy into actions in their respective uh, countries and communities and pass it on to the learners and wider society. It was also interesting to listen to innovative ideas and ownership mechanisms that are set on the ground. I'm confident that this online experience sharing and dialogue created an opportunity to reaffirm that both vertical and horizontal exchange and dialogue are crucial components of complex peace building work. Peace building is not sustainable if efforts are not mainstreamed in education and implanted in the minds of young people. Taking this occasion, opportunity, I would like to express our and my own sincere gratitude to the government of Japan for valuing and supporting our work for the past five years. I would also like to express my heartfelt thanks to all country representatives, youth delegates, participants, and co-organizers who contributed to the conversation during this th uh, three-day session and continue enriching our work. My thanks also goes to Arigato International for their dedication and professionalism. It has been a great pleasure to work with you. Thank you very much, and let us continue doing an excellent work for uh, peace building in Africa. Thank you very much. Over to you, Saliu. Thank you very much, Dr. Yumiko, Director of UNESCO, IBA, for an encouraging and thankful address. Uh, all this has been possible thanks to your insightful leadership and, of course, to the contribution of the government of, of Japan, whose ambassador is here with, with us. So I am going to give the floor to her, His Excellency, Dr. Jive Doné. Je vais, je vais donner la parole à son excellence, l'ambassadeur du Japon à l'Union africaine, l'ambassadeur Toshihiko Hiruchi, pour oui. ses, sa remarque finale. So, ambassadeur, vous avez la parole. D'accord, merci beaucoup. Euh, donc, tu veux que Sako, donc tu Yumiko Yokozeki, euh, chers participants, euh, Arigato International, chers organisateurs, ainsi que professeur Beba Kalunian, professeur Patrick Tom, professeur Nora Teddy, professeur Abad Guetan. Euh, merci beaucoup. Euh, cette réunion de partage d'expérience de trois jours a pour but de donner l'occasion aux pays africains de présenter leurs expériences et leurs efforts pour intégrer euh, la philosophie et l'approche pédagogique de l'éducation à la paix dans le système éducatif et de s'inspirer de bonnes pratiques de chacun 
qui continue à se développer sur le continent africain. Il est encourageant et stimulant d'assister à l'émergence d'initiatives locales, notamment parmi les jeunes et les éducateurs, d'autant plus que l'appropriation est l'un des principaux piliers de la coopération internationale du Japon avec l'Afrique. Dans la région africaine, les pays qui peinent à atteindre les objectifs du développement durable ODD sont souvent en conflit, ou particulièrement vulnérables aux conflits violents, car l'instabilité simple, la cohésion sociale, décourage les investissements et compromet le développement inclusif. Les expériences de l'Afrique avec des siècles de violence structurelle et sa manifestation dans, ces conflits, dans des conflits prolongés ainsi que l'instabilité socio-économique démontrent la nécessité de se con concentrer sur la paix fondamentale et des mesures pour traiter les causes profondes. Et je crois que le dialogue intergénérationnel qui a eu lieu dans cette session de trois jours, impliquant les jeunes et les décideurs en politique de différents pays en même temps, est en effet l'une des étapes importantes pour faire face et réfléchir à ces questions sous-jacentes, ainsi que les solutions possibles. L'aspiration à la construction d'une société résiliente et durable est au cœur de l'agenda 2063 de l'Union africaine, ainsi que des approches que le gouvernement du Japon adopte pour guider ses relations avec les pays africains et l'Afrique dans son ensemble. Une telle société n'est possible qu'avec une croissance de qualité qui englobe l'inclusion, la durabilité et la résilience ainsi qu'avec la sécurité humaine qui met l'accent sur l'enforcement le, des capacités d'accès sur chaque individu. L'une des principales initiatives prises par le gouvernement japonais avec cette philosophie est la Conférence internationale de Tokyo sur le développement de l'Afrique, TICAT. Il s'agit d'un forum multilatéral lancé en 1993 pour promouvoir un dialogue politique de haut niveau entre les dirigeants africains et les partenaires du développement. Les réunions ont lieu tous les trois ans en collaboration avec les Nations Unies, le programme des Nations Unies pour le développement, PNUD, la Banque mondiale et la Commission de l'Union africaine. Et cette année, le 27 et 28 de ce mois, nous organisons la huitième réunion en Tunisie. À travers le processus de la TICA, la paix et la stabilité ont été l'un des principaux agendas. Lorsque nous parlons de la croissance de l'Afrique, nous devons également tenir en compte de la santé, de l'éducation, des réseaux sociaux et d'autres facteurs. Nous avons besoin d'une approche euh, intégrée, inclusive et innovante. C'est dans cette optique que le gouvernement du Japon continue de soutenir le travail de l'ICBA, de l'UNESCO, conduit surtout par le directeur, Mme Dr. Yokozeki, qui met en lumière l'importance et le potentiel de l'éducation. Et en effet, le pouvoir de transformer les esprits et les, autres, les attitudes des gens, de promouvoir la pensée relationnelle et de stimuler les actions innovantes. L'éducation est l'un des rares instruments permettant de préparer l'avenir de manière proactive et de prévenir tout conflit social. J'espère que ce partage d'expérience a été utile et stimulant pour tous les participants en permettant surtout la jeunesse africaine et les décisions politiques de créer l'avenir ensemble. Euh, Permettez-moi de présenter euh, mes, mes trois priorités personnelles. Euh, J'ai trois priorités. Euh, D'abord, l'éducation. Ensuite, l'éducation. Et finalement, l'éducation. Donc, je, je vous souhaite le meilleur pour que vos efforts continuent et bonne chance et bon courage. Et merci beaucoup.
beaucoup, merci beaucoup, Excellence, euh, Ambassadeur Toshihiko Horishi, Ambassadeur du Japon au, au Sénégal, en oh, Union africaine, sorry, euh, pour ces mots très encourageants. Et encore, merci d'avoir insisté sur la centralité de l'éducation qui est au début et à la fin du développement, et pour raison pour laquelle vous avez insisté sur cela. Je voudrais à votre, je voudrais à votre suite vraiment féliciter tout le monde, féliciter les participants pour leur contribution très efficace au niveau de ces trois jours de séminaire, de, de webinaire, et pour leur contribution aussi pour l'implémentation des projets relatifs à la paix. Ce n'est que par cela que nous arriverons à transformer de manière durable la société à travers une paix, une paix qui ne peut être installée qu'à travers une bonne éducation. Et je vous invite les uns et les autres à garder ce cap pour que l'Afrique que nous voulons tant, comme, comme euh, cité dans l'agenda, vers son droit puisse aller de l'avant. Merci à toutes et à tous pour votre participation et on se donne rendez-vous à très bientôt. Merci beaucoup, ambassadeur. Merci, merci, docteur Yumiko. Merci à tout le monde. Merci beaucoup, ambassadeur. Je le je le merci. Salut. Merci, docteur Rix. Docteur Rix, merci. Merci, oui. Vraiment, toutes nos félicitations. Merci, merci, directeur. Merci à vous. Merci à envisager les perspectives. Merci. Salut, salut. Merci. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Arfa. Merci. Merci. Thank you, Eleonora. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eleonora. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you from Dakar. Thank you very much. Yes. Bye. Bye, okay. Thank you all. Bye. Bye 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 Michelle. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rusalen. Bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.